thank you for nice introduction. First, I would like to say that I got my leg, leg fractured and I couldn't travel. It, it would have been very good if I would have traveled there and meet you all and discuss further and look for the interesting discussions. But anyway, now I'm presenting uh, some of my past research uh, online. So, but I'm open for the discussions and later also through emails, I'll like to be in touch with all of you. So uh, here I will present today the collective work done by my group in IITM. Uh, here I gave a title, Possible Influences of External Factors on the Indian Summer Monsoon. Uh, some brief introduction, we know that monsoon season lasts from June to September and Indian summer monsoon plays a significant role in shaping the socio-economic and ecological aspects of the Indian region. Adequate monsoon rainfall contributes to ag agricultural productivity, while deficit rainfall leads to drought, crop failures, and water scarcity. There are several factors which uh, influences the Indian summer monsoon. Here I have listed a few. Differential heating over land and ocean, heating over the Tibetan plateau, interaction with aerosol, global warming due to greenhouse gases, El Nino southern oscillation phenomena, etc. Uh, this is figure I adopted from Roxy Atala 2015. Uh, over 100 years, this is uh, IMD data from 1901 to 2012. It shows a declining trend in uh, summer monsoon precipitation around 2 millimeter per day over the Indian region. So uh, there are a number of factors uh, which are linked to the declining trend over the Indian region, such as El Nino. El Nino also, uh, El Nino induced circulations are linked to volcanic eruptions and aerosols causing solar dimming, uh, which causes cooling of the surface and reduction in summer monsoon precipitation. So very briefly, I'll just go through a very uh, quick uh, overview. Uh, what is El Nino and La Nina? During El Nino, significant warming occur over the central and eastern Pacific and cooling over the western Pacific. Opposite is during the La Nina. There is cooling in the central and western uh, eastern Pacific and uh, heating over the western Pacific. So uh, this heating region is associated with ascent and conv uh, convection occur over this region. And there is subsidence over the uh, Indonesia and uh, uh, this part of the region. So El Nino's uh, past study shows that El Nino's are mostly associated with deficit rainfall over the Indian region, while La Nina are associated with uh, enhanced precipitation over the Indian region. Other than that, aerosols, I said, uh, also affect the uh, Indian summer monsoon. So briefly, aerosols are tiny so, uh, solid or uh, liquid particles suspended in the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, they vary in size and shapes, and uh, their composition and origin also varies. Aer uh, aerosols can be natural, such as dust, sea salt, pollen, volcanic ash, and they can be also generated from the anthropogenic activity, industrial emission, vehicular exhaust, and uh, biomass burning, etc. So, yeah. So aerosols are uh, which are emitted directly are called primary aerosols, which are dust, sea salt, um, black carbon aerosol, which are formed through chemical reactions such as sulfate, nitrate, ammonia, organic, uh, aeros uh, organic uh, aerosols, uh, they are secondary aerosols. Uh, aer aerosols exhibit compli uh, complicated composition and vary substantially in size and shape. Aerosols having diameter of 10 micron or less are called PM10 and having a diameter of 2.5 micron or less in diameter are called 2.5 uh, PM 2.5 uh, aerosols and they are, um, if we inhale, they uh, cause, uh, they are dangerous uh, for our uh, lungs and health. So aerosol also, uh, aerosols are of two types, scattering and absorbing. Uh, they absorb or scatter the shortwave radiations. Uh, pure scattering aerosols are sulfate, nitrate, ammonia, sea salt particles and absorbing aerosols are primarily BC and dust. Organic carbon aerosols are partially absorbing and partial, partially scattering. Aerosol also act as a cloud condensation nuclei and ice nucleating par, uh, particles. They uh, participate in cloud formation processes and thus affect the reflectivity and lifetime of the cloud through cloud microphysical processes. Thus, aerosol affect the cloud and precipitation, and they are important component of our climate and hydrological cycle. 
uh, over the Indian region, uh, these are the figures adapted from Babu Achala and Joshi uh, Achala. These are the uh, observations of aerosol optical depth at Trivendram and Vishakhapatnam. And we see uh, that aerosols, means aerosol optical depth shows an increasing trend over these stations. This is uh, for black carbon uh, measurements at the uh, uh, Indo-Gangetic plate over the Himalayan foot uh, ranges. Here also we see that black carbon also shows an increasing trend over this region. So other than aerosols, El Nino, uh, uh, other uh, processes which cause interaction between troposphere and stratosphere are uh, also linked to the uh, uh, influencing the Indian summer monsoon rainfall such as volcano, which inject large amount of uh, sulfur dioxide gas, which then uh, on oxidation forms sulfur aerosols. And these sulfate aerosols are mainly injected in the upper troposphere and into the stratosphere. And uh, they affect the radiative forcing and uh, Asian summer monsoon rainfall, also Indian summer monsoon rainfall. Uh, recent studies also shows that large convection occurring during the monsoon season dip the boundary layer aerosol and trace gases into the upper troposphere Majority of them are being uh, washed out by the rain processes, but one third of them are further transported above the cloud into the upper troposphere and lower stratosphere, where they affect the chemistry of this region, uh, radiative forcing, and affect the monsoon circulation. We'll uh, see some uh, research on this topic also. Uh, uh, there are tropopause folds keep occurring. They uh, allow the stratospheric dry air mass to inject into the upper troposphere. And these uh, dry intrusions also affect the monsoon circulation. Uh, here, the schematic uh, shows that uh, during convection, the uh, cloud uh, uh, updraft uh, plays an important role in lifting the boundary layer pollutant, which are, uh, I said, as in the uh, previous slide, they are uh, wet uh, scavenge. Uh, they are removed by the wet scavenging. Majority of them are removed by the wet scavenging, while one third of them are injected into the tropical tropopause layer. Uh, a large amount of water vapor is also injected along with these aerosol and trace gases in the TTL layer, which then uh, cause cooling of the uh, upper troposphere and lower stratosphere and uh, warming, uh, which is then uh, cause warming of the troposphere and affect the hydrological cycle. So um, uh, these aerosol and gases which are lifted into the upper troposphere uh, are entered into the monsoon anticyclone. We know that during monsoon season, there is an anticyclone around 100 hectopascal or around 15 kilometer in the upper troposphere. It typically covers from uh, 12 uh, degree north to around uh, 40 degree north and around 30 degree east to 130 degree east. So this large monsoon anticyclone covers South Asia and East Asia. And recent uh, satellite observation modeling simulations uh, show that the boundary layer pollutants, including aerosol and trace gases, are lifted by the monsoon convection. And they uh, enter into this high pressure uh, zone, uh, this anticyclone. And that is why anticyclone shows a high amount of uh, uh, trace gases and aerosol into the monsoon anticyclone, except ozone. So uh, uh, to understand these transposed processes and impact of these aerosols on the Indian summer monsoon, we perform uh, experiments uh, majorly from the ecam hamos uh, chemistry climate model. Uh, our model simulation shows that aerosols are lifted into the monsoon anticyclone via two branches, one over South Asia and another over East Asia. So uh, aerosols which are uh, transported into the monsoon anticyclone uh, form a layer known as Asian tropopause uh, aerosol layer, achal, uh, uh, which is also evident in calypso uh, scattering ratio. This achal uh, prevails around 15 to 17 kilometer during the monsoon season. This is from uh, Vernier Achala 2015. So uh, our model simulation also shows high amount of aerosols in the uh, in this region of Achal here, I have shown the distribution of uh, black carbon, but we have also shown uh, the uh, scattering ratio, which I will come to later. 
uh, here we show uh, what happens then once these aerosols uh, enter into the anticyclone, what happens further. So here is a cross section of uh, extinction obtained from our model simulation and we see that once they enter into the anticyclone, these are slowly lifted upward, equatorward and downward into the southern hemisphere by the lower branch of the biodiversity circulation. This is also evident in sage and halloe extinction. Uh, for the monsoon 2003, we can see that uh, uh, southward transport uh, of the aerosols is seen in halo and uh, sage extinction. So in order to un uh, understand how they are lifted here, uh, we have analyzed the convective parameter. This is distribution of cloud droplet number concentration and ice crystal number concentration averaged over the Indian region around 20 to 30 degree north, or as I will say more precisely over the Indo-Gangetic plain. And we see that there is a draft uh, uh, over the southern slopes of Himalaya and South China Sea, uh, which uh, plays an important role in transporting aerosol into the monsoon anticyclone, which forms the Achana. So in order to understand the impact of these aerosols, we switch off, we perform experiments with, uh, with aerosol, that is a controlled air experiment. And in another experiment, we switch off all aerosols. So aerosols do not interact with the cloud processes. Uh, so we, uh, this experiment is aerosol off experiment. Uh, and then we analyze the aerosol on minus aerosol off uh, exp uh, experiment. So these are the anomalies in temperature and we see that aerosol has produced significant heating over the Tibetan plateau region. This heating has uh, further uh, uh, caused more uh, water uh, uh, evaporation and we see that vertical transport of water vapor uh, uh, this black line is tropopause and uh, water vapor is transported into the low stratosphere. And once the water vapor is transported into the low stratosphere, it cools the stratosphere and there is a warming in the troposphere, which is also seen here. Here, uh, we understand the impact of aerosol uh, uh, during El Nino year and normal year. So, uh, we know that El Nino itself reduces the rainfall and what happens if uh, aerosols uh, are there along with the El Nino, whether it affects, uh, reduces the rainfall or it increases the rainfall. So we perform the experiment uh, for the El Nino year and normal year with aerosol and without aerosol uh, control experiment. And for the El Nino uh, year uh, experiment, control experiment with aerosol on and off. And for the El Nino year, uh, aerosol on and off and uh, IMIP uh, uh, experiment. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a distribution of, um, aerosol uh, achal uh, for the year 2015, that is the El Nino year, we see that uh, achal is uh, mostly uh, dense and concentrated over the Indian region. This is distribution of a uh, scattering ratio from Calypso for the uh, normal year 2016. And we see that achal is quite well distributed within the monsoon anticyclone. Uh, from 30 degree east to around 130 degree east and complete monsoon anticyclone, uh, it is spread. But that is not the case during the El Nino year. Similar distribution is also seen in ecam 6 hango uh, simulation. We see that Atal is mostly concentrated over the Indian region uh, during the year 2015, which is an El Nino year. And normal year, it is well distributed in the monsoon anticyclone. Our uh, model simulation shows that during Normal year, there are two branches which supply aerosol to the uh, anticyclone. One is over South Asia and another over the East Asia. But during El Nino year, because of subsidence over the Indian region, this uh, branch become weak and there is no supply of aerosol from the South Asian branch. And supply of aerosol to the anticyclone mostly occur from the East Asian region. So this is the difference between El Nino and control. And we see that during El Nino, we have uh, aerosol layer in the troposphere thick and uh, there is a tall thick attack residing over the Indian region. This is mainly because of supply of aerosol from the East Asian branch. So this attack has caused uh, significant cooling over the North Indian region. It has, uh, I will not say only a child, but the aerosol layer in the troposphere also has played a role. So there is a uh, uh, decreasing uh, solar uh, flux reaching the surface. Uh, this has increased the stability of the upper troposphere, and these are the anomalies of heating rate. Uh, we can see that complete troposphere over the Indian region is cool uh, because of this uh, aerosol layer over the Indian region. 
So um, as I said, El Nino itself reduces the rainfall. This is distribution of aerosol one minus of aerosol. There are no aerosol in the model and El Nino minus control. So just because of the El Nino, there is decreasing precipitation over the Indian region. And we switch on the aerosol in the model. Uh, we see that during El Nino, aerosol further reduces the rainfall. So our model simulation shows that aerosol uh, exacerbate the uh, severity of drought during El Nino by around and decreasing rainfall by around 17%. Through this schematic, we show the uh, uh, processes uh, occurring. So this is for the normal year. We have an aerosol layer in the troposphere, and then there is a achar uh, in the upper troposphere. So what happens during El Nino year? There is a tropospheric air and a thick branch of aerosol supply from the East Asia that extended over the South Asian region, which form additional thick cover over the Indian region, which inhibit the solar uh, fluxes reaching the surface monsoon processes and further reduces the rainfall over the Indian region. Here we analyze the impact of carbonaceous aerosol. We uh, switch on uh, and off black carbon and organic carbon aerosol together, black carbon aerosol separately and organic carbon aerosol separately. Uh, I have not switched on and off. In this exp uh, experiment, we have doubled the carbonaceous aerosol, uh, black, black carbon and organic carbon together. So this is doubling emissions minus control. And we see that uh, 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 these carbonaceous aerosols are extended uh, up uh, into the uh, uh, upper troposphere. Uh, and here we see the heating rate. Uh, we see that doubling of carbonaceous aerosol has, uh, I think there is some mistake in giving this title. This is for the control simulation and this is for doubling of the carbonaceous aerosol. So doubling of carbonaceous aerosol has increased the, uh, the uh, uh, what, uh, transport of uh, carbonaceous aerosol into the upper troposphere. In case of control, it is less. So heating also uh, is more because of doubling of carbonaceous aerosol in the, in the upper troposphere than the control experiment. Uh, here is the uh, distribution of temperature for the control and this is for doubling of the carbonaceous aerosol. And we see that carbonaceous aerosol has caused significant heating over the Tibetan plateau. So uh, this heating over the Tibetan uh, plateau caused uh, early and uh, uh, northward propagation of the monsoon IT, uh, monsoon uh, ITCZ toward the Indian region and increases the rainfall over the Indian region. Here we show the uh, uh, anomalies in burn Faisara frequency because of doubling of the carbonaceous aerosol. We can see that upper troposphere is quite unstable. This is for the control simulation of uh, vertical velocity and this is for doubling of uh, carbonaceous aerosol. We can see that uh, carbonaceous aerosol has enhanced the vertical transport. It has enhanced the hardy circulation, deepening of the OLR, and it has increased the rainfall uh, over the Indian region. So this is for the control uh, simulation. Uh, this is for doubling of uh, black carbon aerosol, and this is for doubling of the organic carbon aerosol. We can see that only doubling of uh, uh, black carbon aerosol has uh, enhanced uh, rainfall much more uh, uh, while uh, uh, doubling of organic carbon aerosol has not increased the rainfall over the Indian region. Further, we also analyzed the impact of sulfate aerosol. Here, we did a different kind of experiment. What we did, we took the OMI uh, satellite observations. Uh, it shows the SO2 emission in the um, planetary boundary layer. So we obtained a trend in uh, uh, SO2 emission over the Indian region and East Asia, um, in, uh, over the South Asia and East Asia, India and China. So um, because of the uh, regulation of uh, emission of uh, SO2 to curb the pollution, uh, China has reduced the SO2 emission uh, uh, during uh, 2000, after 2006. So uh, estimated trade of SO2 emission over China is around uh, minus 7% um, per, per year or around 7% per, per year. And over India, the, it, is, it shows the increasing trend of 4.8% per year. So following this trend, we have increased the SO2 emission over the Indian region by 48% for a flat 10 years and uh, decreased the SO2 emission over China by 70%. And uh, this is the distribution of sulfate aerosol for India 48 and 
uh, experiment together India 48 and reduction uh, over China by 70% together. So with, we, we have enhanced uh, SO2 over India only. There are no changes over the China. We see that sulfate aerosols are transported. They are uh, enter into the monsoon IT cyclone and uh, form a layer here. Also, they are transported to the Arctic. So in the experiment where we increased uh, over India and reduction over China by 70%, this plume which is transported upward from the Indian region is feasible because of the subsidence caused by decreasing sulfate emission over the uh, China. So uh, this feeble plume uh, has uh, affected radiative forcing. Uh, this is the radiative forcing uh, obtained by the aerosol only in the UTLS region and we see that this aerosol layer, this is a contribution coming from the aerosol layer in the upper troposphere has pulled the uh, Indian uh, region, uh, I mean complete Asian region, India and South, uh, South Asia and East Asia. While reduction over the uh, South Asia uh, and increase over the India has a small decrease over in the radi uh, radiative forcing over the Indian region. So interestingly, there, uh, there are changes in the uh, circulation and radiative forcing has affected the temperature. This is distribution of temperature uh, for India 48 simulation over the Indian region. And we see that the Tibetan plateau is quite cool. And the aerosol layer above the tropopause, near the tropopause here has caused uh, uh, warming uh, here. And uh, this is a, a temperature distribution from India 48 and China 70. So we see that uh, reduction of emission over China has also caused upper troposphere cooling over the Indian region, and which has uh, implication of reduction in now south temperature gradient, uh, and which is linked to the re uh, reduction in monsoon circulation and precipitation. Although we have not uh, reported uh, changes in um, precipitation in this uh, paper, but we see that there is a reduction in precipitation over the Indian region because of the emission changes caused in the neighboring country. So um, as we have seen that there are two branches which cause transport of aerosols from uh, into the anticyclone one from South Asia and East Asia. So in order to understand their contribution, we perform an experiment where we switch on and off anthropogenic aerosols over South Asia and East Asian region. So uh, switching of the aerosol over South Asia is called SAS0 and over East Asia is called ES0. So we analyze this experiment against the control experiment. This is distribution of black carbon aerosol at 100 hectopascal in the monsoon anticyclone region. Control minus South Asia uh, aerosol switch off. So indicating the contribution coming from the South Asian region and we see that uh, a thick layer of black carbon aerosol in the monsoon anticyclone region, which is not the case for the East Asian region. Our analysis shows that East Asian emissions are lifted up, but their outflow occurs at the lower level than the South Asian uh, emissions. This is because a Himalayan topography plays an important role here. Because of the uh, elevated Himalaya, this aerosol uh, uh, draft occur at a slightly higher altitude than in case of the East Asian emissions. So similar distribution is also seen in case of the organic carbon aerosols. Oh, what happened? Okay, yeah. So this is distribution of black carbon aerosols average over the monsoon anticyclone region control minus uh, South uh, South Asia um, simulation. This is plotted over the isentropes. And we see that uh, the uh, uh, plume of black carbon aerosol transported above this black line is tropopods. They are transported above the tropopods and they are further transported to the Arctic. Here also we see uh, from the East Asia. So we can see that, yes, there is a more uh, transport quite deep uh, into the uh, upper troposphere in case of South Asia than in case of the East Asian um, aerosol emissions. This is distribution of. Uh, organic carbon aerosols. Here I have shown the distribution of cloud droplet number concentration and ice crystal no uh, number concentration average over the uh, 20 to, uh, I think 15 to 30 degree latitude. And we see that there are two branches, one over the South Asia, another over East Asia and South Asian uh, uh, convective, updra uh, convective uh, upliftment is little higher than, than in case of the East Asian region. That is why uh, this transport is at a higher altitude in case of South Asia than in case of the East Asian region. 
Further, we estimate the radiative forcing changes at the Arctic. The aerosol which are transported to the Arctic will affect the Arctic radiative forcing. So these are the radiative forcing changes at the Arctic because of South Asian emissions and East Asian emissions. And we see that at the top of the atmosphere, at the surface and in the, in the atmosphere, these radiative forcing uh, estimates uh, over South Asian regions are less than the East Asian region. Although Southeast Asian emissions are not lifted up uh, into the anticyclone, but their transport, large amount are transported to the Arctic than in case of the South Asian emissions. So their impact over the Arctic are larger than the South Asian. These are the heating rates um, for the South Asian emissions, and this is for East Asian emission. And we see that East Asian emission uh, heating uh, at the Arctic are less than South Asian emissions. Uh, this is net, ready, uh, net heating rate and this is short wave heating rate and this is a long wave heating rate and we see that long wave heating rate for the East Asian emissions are negative which is not the case for South Asian emission. So our analysis shows that East Asian emission was heating uh, the lower, uh, lower troposphere and we generate more water vapor which is transported to the Arctic uh, stratosphere and was cooling of the Arctic stratosphere. So uh, here, um, the point of uh, this paper is to show that these um, aerosols which are lifted into the monsoon anticyclone are transported to the Arctic and affect the Arctic radiative forcing and uh, heating rate and affect the climate system. So further here, I show that uh, effect of the uh, Rossby wave baking occurring on the, in the monsoon anticyclone, these are over the Asian region. So we know that monsoon anticyclone is quite vibrant in nature. Uh, Rossby wave uh, breaking occurs in the subtropical westerly jet. Here arrow indicate the location of Rossby wave. This is the case I have shown for the June 2014. So Rossby wave breaking occur in the westerly jet. It uh, uh, propagate eastward along the uh, uh, westerly jet. Here is the case uh, uh, I have shown for alternate day for June 2015. Uh, this is distribution of PV. Uh, 10th June, uh, uh, 12th June, 14th, 16th, and 18th June. And uh, along with the winds I have plotted, and we see that there is a, a cyclonic circulation at the location of Rosmere breaking, and which is associated with two anticyclones at the both sides. So this is the location of Rosmere uh, breaking. We see that on 10th June, it is um, uh, over the West Asia. Uh, on 12th June, it is uh, transported uh, over the North India region. Uh, on 14th June, it is further moved its world, but uh, its penetration toward equator is higher. For, uh, on 16th June, it moved away from the Indian region and 18th June, much away from the Indian region. When we see vertical distribution of PV on this day, we see that uh, it uh, uh, there uh, they are uh, entered into the upper this 380K is our tropopause, and we see that stratospheric PVs are introduced into the upper troposphere. Here we see that they get detached, and we see the eddy shading uh, kind of events over the Indian region. Uh, here we can see over the clearly the eddy uh, is detached from the stratosphere and it penetrated downward over the Indian region. This is distribution of latitude versus height, and we can see that this air mass coming from the uh, extratropical stratosphere in the troposphere over the Indian region. We can see this is quite deep over the Indian region, uh, around uh, 800 hectopascal. And um, as Rasbio breaking moves away from the Indian region, it, uh, uh, their, its uh, intrusion over the Indian region is less. So these intrusion events are associated with dry air. This is a uh, distribution of relative humidity. We see that on this day, relative humidity is less than 10%. So this uh, Rossby wave breaking events cause extreme intrusion of extreme dry stratospheric air in the troposphere over the Indian region. So this uh, air mass coming from the extratropical low stratosphere also affect the temperature. This is uh, uh, anomalies of temperature. Uh, this is distribution of temperature anomalies uh, um, uh, uh, over the uh, for the month of June. Uh, this is vertical distribution, and we see that on 10th June when there was a Rossby wave breaking event, there is incursion of uh, cold air mass from the stratosphere in the upper troposphere. This air mass remain in the upper troposphere over the uh, Indian region for uh, around 
uh, 10 to 12 days. This uh, intrusion are associated with uh, 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 dry uh, intrusions. Uh, there is decreasing uh, relative humidity. Uh, it's quite dry. And uh, this dry and cold air mass increases the stability over the Indian region. So stable atmosphere uh, inhibit the cloud processes and uh, may affect the rainfall. So we have seen that uh, these uh, intrusions occurring over the Indian region uh, during uh, this 2014 case. Further, we analyze uh, how and when these intrusions are uh, occurring. So we have uh, seen that we have analyzed the all break days uh, during uh, 1979 to 2007. We analyzed the break days and active days and uh, uh, reported by Rajivan Achala 2010. We see that this intrusion are mostly associated with the break days, monsoon break days. Every break here, I have we have shown the break days only, have, uh, which are divided over two parts over the Indian region. This is 60 to 78 and 78 to 110. And we see that each break day, there are stratospheric intrusion occurring over the Indian region and few days are associated with the uh, eddy shedding events. Further, we uh, understand uh, what is happening. So we analyze the rain for data, um, uh, winds and all parameter related to monsoon uh, um, circulation and processes. Here I have shown the bivariate uh, frequency distribution of rainfall anomaly and uh, PV. So a PV greater than two indicates the stratospheric air mass. So here I have plotted a PV uh, from two to around 12 and this is a rainfall anomaly. And we see that this distribution is negatively skewed over both the regions. This indicate that the stratospheric intrusions are associated with decreasing rainfall. Uh, further figures in our uh, paper, which is published in JAS, uh, Journal of Climate, we, you can go through details of this. Here we have explained the uh, processes uh, that is called uh, stratospheric intrusions, uh, increases the stability of the upper troposphere. It weakens the vertical extent of deep convection. It reduces the synoptic activity. It also weakens the north-south uh, thermal uh, contrast. It causes weakening of easterly jet and not for propagation of monsoon intraseasonal oscillation and thus reduces the rainfall over the Indian region. Further, uh, dynamic nature of the monsoon anticyclone is also uh, uh, shown here. This is the case for July 2003, which is a normal year. And here I have shown that one star and one circle showing the eddy shading region. So this highly dynamic monsoon anticyclone shares the eddy to east and west of the monsoon anticyclone. So a low PV air mass is mon monsoon anticyclone region. And we see that this uh, monsoon anticyclone shares eddy. Uh, here, we, if you trace this, this star or this circle, they get detached from the anticyclone to east and west of the monsoon anticyclone, and they move towards the West Africa and Western Pacific. So uh, this is the distribution of PV. I have plotted from 1st to 8th July uh, 2003, alternate day. So 1st July, eddy shading events start occurring uh, uh, over the Western Pacific. On uh, 3rd July, it became intense and their air mass start getting separated from the anticyclone. Here it is further uh, stronger and, and uh, air mass get detached from the anticyclone and move further westward, westward over the uh, uh, Africa. Here we can see that it is completely detached from the monsoon anticyclone. Another eddy shading event start uh, forming over the eastern edge of the monsoon anticyclone. Here it becomes uh, further stronger and it gets detached from the anticyclone and it moves over the Western Pacific. This is completely detached from the anticyclone over the Western Pacific. And it, here we can see it is much away from the monsoon anticyclone and over the Western Pacific. So this air mass is uh, representative of the uh, pollutant which are transported from the boundary layer into the anticyclone. So we should also see this uh, 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 eddies which are uh, separated from the monsoon anticyclone should have high amount of pollutants. So we analyzed the MIPAS and uh, our ECAM6 uh, model, uh, carbon monoxide, and we see that uh, this regions of, uh, this is distribution from MIPAS. Uh, so because of uh, less data available here, we have white patches, but there is an indication that there is a high CO in the region of monsoon anticyclone. This is also evident in our model simulation. So we further track uh, other pollutant other than uh, CO, uh, like PAN, other species, 
from the model simulation and find their impacts. So this is vertical distribution of pan uh, from the ECAM6 HAMO simulation alternate day during uh, first wave July. And we see that there is a high pan in the upper troposphere in the region of uh, eddy shading. And this, uh, we know that pan is a reservoir of NOx. It releases NOx and affect the ozone and the radiative forcing uh, other than the pollution over the West, Western Pacific and uh, uh, West Africa region. So other than these chemical uh, pollutants, uh, aerosols and gases, uh, volcano also affect the uh, monsoon uh, precipitation. Here uh, we have analyzed the volcanoes occurring uh, during 1871 to 2016, around 140 years of volcanoes. Uh, this is the location red dot shows the volcanoes over the uh, in the tropics uh, in the tropical region and blue uh, uh, triangles are extratropical volcanoes. So um, we can see that tropical volcanoes are mostly uh, clustered near the Indian region. Uh, we analyze both uh, extratropical volcanoes and tropical volcanoes, their impact on the Indian summer monsoon rainfall. So a uh, previous study shows that North uh, Northern Hemispheric volcanoes uh, weakened the precipitation over the north, northern hemisphere by the volcano occurring over the in the northern hemisphere, while the volcanoes, uh, uh, volcanoes uh, in the southern hemisphere uh, enhances the precipitation over the nor northern hemisphere. Simic five models uh, also uh, have a, they have analyzed the five major vol uh, volcano: Krakatau, Santa Maria, Angang, El Chichon, and Pinato. Pinatubo. They also uh, have shown that uh, this five volcanic eruption. Uh, reduces the rainfall after the uh, next year after the volcanic eruption. So, considering this uh, background, uh, we have analyzed the impact of volcanoes, tropical and extratropical volcanoes, over the Indian summer monsoon rainfall. We have quantified their impact and we understand the mechanism how they are affecting the precipitation over the Indian region. So, this is a time series of rainfall for June to September, mean precipitation uh, anomaly. During 1871 to 2016, uh, this is for the tropical volcanoes uh, for uh, 30 degree south to uh, 30 degree north. We have considered all volcanoes having emissivity index greater than three, indicating the moderate volcano. So here, uh, uh, red stars indicate the volcanoes, and this bar indicates the rainfall anomalies. So black bar are the rainfall anomaly for the normal year. Pink bars are for the uh, El Nino year and blue bar are for the La Nina year. So we can see that uh, this uh, La Nina, uh, these are the uh, La Nina years uh, are associated with the uh, uh, increasing rainfall, while El Nino uh, uh, events are mostly uh, associated with the deficit rainfall. And further, then we uh, segregate the uh, precipitation anomaly. Uh, for the uh, tropical volcanoes um, uh, associated with the normal year, associated with the uh, La Nina years, and associated with the El Nino years. We analyze the tropical volcano and extratropical volcanoes both. So this is a, a, a probability distribution function uh, for the this black curve is for the rainfall anomaly without any volcano. We can see that it is positively skewed. Uh, while this uh, red uh, distribution is for the precipitation associated with the tropical volcano, we see that tropical volcano causes reduction in rainfall over the Indian region since it is negatively skewed, which is not the case for the extratropical volcano, which is a green curve here, which is positively skewed. So this is a probability distribution for the rainfall for the volcanoes associated with El Nino. This black is for the uh, uh, without El Nino and La Nina. So volcano itself reduces the rainfall over the Indian region since it is a negatively skewed uh, distribution. And uh, El Nino further reduces the rainfall. Uh, volcano which are associated with El Nino further reduces the rainfall over the Indian region. While the uh, volcanoes associated with La Nina does not reduce the rainfall over the uh, Indian region. So in order to understand the mechanism, we uh, uh, simulated a Nagro volcano using our ECAM6 uh, uh, 
uh, our system model. Here we performed 10 member simulation from 1st January to 10 January 2011 when NABRO occurred. So we injected 1.5 teragram of sulfate at the location of NABRO that is 42 degree east and 13 degree north on 12th June and continued for uh, four to five days. Uh, and uh, simulations were uh, extended up to 31st December 2013 since uh, January 2011. Uh, here we show that uh, distribution of uh, scattering ratio from ECAM 6 HAMOS simulation, it indicates the volcanic plume uh, um, uh, when it occurs here in July uh, 2011. So our analysis shows that, or even from the satellite observation, we see that NABRO occurred uh, on around 26 June uh, 2011 at uh, um, uh, Africa, uh, but plume transported into the anticyclone region uh, around uh, around uh, 1st July. So this is distribution from 1st July 2011 for uh, up to uh, December 2012. And we see that this NABRO plume has uh, uh, extended upward with the propagation of time, it uh, uh, deepened into the stratosphere around 15 kilometer. And in the next monsoon season, it still remained in the stratosphere. There was a char here and there was a nabro plume in the stratosphere, which is also evident in the scattering ratio measurement from Calypso. And in Nipas, there is a plume indication, but there is no data here. But interestingly, this calypso also shows a double layer structure in the next monsoon season. This is a chal and this is the nabro plume. So there was a thick layer of aerosol over the ETM region. So we understand the mechanism of uh, for what is happening. So we analyze the, uh, this is for spectra density and we apply bandpass filter and we found that there was a, uh, a strong Kelvin wave uh, in the west, in the central uh, and eastern Pacific. This is distribution of zonal wind uh, stress anomaly uh, since uh, June 2000, July 2011 to end of the uh, 2012. And we see that uh, Stuart propagating uh, Kelvin waves in the Central Pacific. So these downwelling Kelvin waves through LST interaction has produced significant heating. These are the anomalies of temperature, uh, sea surface temperature at the Nino 3.4 uh, and uh, Nino 3 region for the winter and uh, monsoon 2011 here this is uh, uh, 2011 and next year also this uh, 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 rosbier dissipation keep occurring and it has further increased the uh, sea surface temperature in the you know 3 and 3.4 region so this uh, downwelling Kel uh, kelvin wave has produced el nino like warming in the central uh, pacific uh, and we know that el nino uh, related uh, changes in circulation causes reduction in rainfall. We have shown this circulation in the paper, but because of interest of time, I have not included those figure here. Um, but we see that uh, there is reduction in rainfall over the Indian region. This is from our anomaly of uh, rainfall uh, for the monsoon season uh, for 2011. This is for July to uh, uh, September in 2011, but in 2012, it is from June to September. So uh, this is from ECAM model, and this is from GPCB, and this is from IND uh, rainfall measurements. So 2012, uh, 11, there was a reduction in rainfall. And uh, in the next year also, there was a reduction in rainfall. Mm -hmm. This is a big, uh, from the ECAM model. This is GPCB and uh, IMD. In ECAM model, we have a volcano uh, effect of Nabro volcano here, uh, which is uh, also seen in the uh, IMD. Rainfall. This is weekly departure of India meteorological uh, rainfall uh, for the uh, 2011, and we see that it is less in 2011 and in 2012 uh, there was decreasing rainfall over the Indian region. So here uh, through this schematic, we uh, explain the mechanism. For the normal year, there is monsoon high circulation and rainfall occurs. But whenever volcano occurs in the tropic, here we have shown the Nabro. It, it spreads the aerosol layer over the Indian region and it inhibits the solar radiation and pulls the surface because the monsoon had the circulation. And it, uh, because of this uh, changes in surface temperature, it generates the Kelvin wave. Uh, they dissipate uh, in the uh, uh, Central Pacific and produces heating. This dissipation is stronger in the next year. 
uh, and it creates El Nino like warming in the next year in the Pacific. And uh, in the first year of uh, volcanic uh, eruption, this reduction of rainfall is mainly because of this thick aerosol layer. But in the next year, this aerosol layer reaches much high in the uh, stratosphere and uh, reduction is mainly because of El Nino related subsidence over the Indian region. So uh, after the volcano, for two consecutive years, there is reduction in rainfall. First year is because of the aerosol layer and second is because of the El Nino uh, related warming created into the uh, Pacific region. So uh, here I stop. Uh, oh, one more uh, paper I have also added here. Uh, further, we have also uh, uh, simulated the uh, COVID uh, emission changes uh, occurred during the COVID-19 period. So we have reduced the aerosols and trace gases based on the Google and Apple uh, 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 data, uh, which are introduced in the ECAM6 uh, emission inventory of ECAM6 HAMOS uh, model. And we simulated the model uh, for the uh, uh, April uh, for to analyze the COVID uh, situation during April and May uh, 2020. This is for March, April, and May. This is distribution of surface uh, sulfate aerosol uh, anomaly. This is black carbon and this is organic carbon. So in March, we see there is enhancement in sulfate, black carbon, and uh, organic carbon aerosol over the Indian region. This is because lockdown occurred uh, on 28 March. But uh, after the lockdown uh, in April and May, there was a reduction in the sulfate, black carbon, and organic carbon aerosol over the Indian region. Our analysis shows that these changes in the uh, aerosols and trace gases has perturbed the uh, temperature circulation. And here I have shown the geopotential height anomalies uh, for the monsoon season. These are 900 hectopascal. Uh, uh, this is for April, May, and this is for June, July, August, September. This is means pre-monsoon, this is lockdown period, and this is the monsoon period in the same year. We see that there, uh, there is a high uh, over the uh, 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 Saudi Arabia region, and there is a low over the Indian region. Uh, this is for, for 500 hectopascal, there is high over Eurasia and this uh, Saudi Arabia, and there is a low over the Indian region. There is a significant uh, increase in uh, shortwave radiation because of reduced uh, pollution over the Indian region, which has increased the temperature over the Tibetan plateau. It has enhanced the monsoon had the circulation and increased the precipitation over India. It is around 15% or 3 millimeter per day over the Indian region just because of the uh, COVID uh, reduction of pollution because of the COVID lockdown period. So, um, Yes, uh, it is. Uh, these pollutants play an important role in affecting the uh, rainfall uh, processes and precipitation over the Indian region. So, reduction of their amount has benefited the uh, uh, monsoon precipitation. So, conclusion are the same which I have shown for the uh, end of each uh, of the, our study. So, um, I would like to thank you and take some questions. Um, so, do you have any questions for Suvarna? Uh, yeah, Vishal. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Suvarna, for uh, a nice talk. So, my question is about the simulation you showed where uh, during El Nino years, uh, volcanoes cool and uh, influence precipitation. So, I was wondering what is causing change in Kelvin waves that you observed? Uh, it is because of thermal changes in temperature. So this uh, layer of aerosol here blocks the solar radiation. It cools the surface. And this uh, temperature gradient over the Pacific and Indian region uh, generate the Kelvin waves and which dissipate in this region. So this dissipation is weak in the year of volcanic eruption. And next year, it is stronger. OK, yeah. thanks. Okay. Okay, we have one more question. Sorry. Hi. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for the speech. Uh, I can see in uh, monsoon break you have discussed in a slide that is from 1979 to 2007. Yes. 
Yeah, uh, just I wanted to know uh, why the uh, break days are showing AD shading. Like, and there is any uh, particular relation about that? Can you repeat your question? The break days you are showing here, mm -hmm. it's, uh, I can see the AD shading clearly here. Yeah, so break days are associated with strong Rossby wave uh, breaking. So it uh, includes the stratospheric cold and dry air mass. So this dry and cold air mass in, inhibit the monsoon processes and it causes the breaks. So that is why these days are associated with the uh, addition. So because of strong Rossby wave breaking, it allows the cold and dry stratospheric air mass in the upper troposphere, which inhibit the monsoon processes. That is why on the break days we have, every break days we have uh, stratospheric air mass coming into the troposphere because of the Rossby wave which has halted the monsoon processes. And ma'am, uh, uh, is this uh, break days are composite over these years? No, each and every break days have been shown here. Okay, thank you. These are the days from 1 to 42. So these are listed as per Rajiv Netala 2010. Um, do we have any other questions? Um, okay, I, I had one question. When you showed the, uh, the two branches of aerosol upwelling during the El Nino year and uh, the year without El Nino, um, I was wondering, I mean, was that a single year? Yeah, this. Uh, well, like, how, how many, uh, over how many years is this plot average? And I, I will tell you, this is a control year, uh, control simulation for one year. And here for El Nino simulation, we have imposed El Nino related warming in the Western Pacific. So this is a design experiment, what we have done in 1997, uh, this uh, El Nino related warming. So I have figure one. Uh, but how, how do you separate? What I have done, I have, I have taken this SSTs and rest of the year SST I kept as it is. And this, those imposed uh, in, uh, 1997 case and made the simulation. So we do not have IOD or something in 1997. There was an IOD and LD, but in our uh, rest of the SSTs are climatological SST, and we impose this El Nino related SST in our simulation, and then we made the simulation. So these are the uh, design experiment. This is not for the particular year. But when we did for the 2015 and 16 case here for another paper, uh, this is the 15 and 16. Uh, also, we have shown in this uh, paper, other than this design experiment for 15 and 16, we also see similar branches. Okay. So these are given in a supplementary figures of this paper. For 15 and 16, also we have these branches. I mean, so the differences are minor here. So I was wondering, how do you uh, uh, account for natural this ability? This is black carbon aerosol. This is not extinction. So if we make percentage, yes, there is. Their amounts are very less black carbon than organic carbon. But when you take their percentage, they are around 20%. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Okay. Uh, hello, yes. I was wondering whether uh, uh, is there any relation between desert dust and uh, Indian summer monsoon, like from Sahara Desert or Taklamagan Desert or uh, even our like the third desert? Yes, yes, there is definite uh, impact, but I have not done such studies. But there are a number of papers uh, which have shown the impact. There's dust. Even Dao uh, Achal to Dao and Kim 2006 has shown that this uh, uh, no, uh, sa, uh, no, Saudi Arabia and this uh, from this region, this dust is transported during pre monsoon season and it then piles up over the southern slopes of Himalaya and increases the uh, warming over the Tibetan plateau region and cause early onset and it increases the rainfall over the Indian region. So there are other papers also impact of uh, dust coming from the different region. Interestingly, I have seen in our COVID paper, 
uh, whether I have shown here in this or not. So changes in, no, I have not shown. So changes in uh, these uh, gases and aerosols uh, reduction over the uh, uh, globally has uh, changed the dust transport over the Indian region. So generally during pre-monsoon season, dust uh, transport occur from Saudi Arabia region to the Himalayan region. But because of this COVID changes, uh, and thus was transported from Mongolia region to the Himalayan region and was piled up over this region, which is also um, seen in the uh, OMI uh, measurements. So yes, there is a definite impact of dust. And dust generally cause heating and increases the rainfall over the Indian region. All right, any further questions? Um, okay, let's thank Suvarna again for, for the talk. Thank you all for patient listening and thank you Aman and Jim for giving me this opportunity.